Here are some of the business stories we are tracking for you at this time. Amid Nigeria's tight fiscal space, the federal government has recorded a deficit of 5.33 trillion naira between January and August 2022, which is 430.82 billion naira above the pro rate level. The government spent 9.56 trillion naira from January to August 2022 out of 11.55 trillion naira pro rate expenditure projected for the period. Of the 9.56 trillion naira spent in eight months, 3.52 trillion naira was expended on debt service, while 2.89 trillion naira was used for personal costs and pensions. The total expenditure projected for the whole of 2022 is 17.32 trillion naira. And speaking during the ministerial presentation of the 2023 budget, Minister of Finance, Budget and National Planning, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, said the federal government's retained revenue was 4.23 trillion naira as of August 2022, representing 64% of the pro rate target of 6.65 trillion naira. Meanwhile, the federal government has ordered telecommunications companies to reverse their recent 10% hike in calls and data prices. This decision means telcos, uh, who had initially increased the prices of their data bundles by 10%, uh, will now need to revert to their old prices. This was revealed by the Nigerian Communications Commission on Wednesday. The commission said the initial consideration for 10% approval for tariff adjustments for different voice and data packages was in line with the mandates of the commissioners provided by the Nigerian Communications Act 2003 and other extant regulations and guidelines, as this was within the provisions of existing price floor and price cap as determined for the telecommunications industry. And to the aviation sector, the House of Representatives is appealing to foreign airlines to make affordable airfare layers available to the Nigerian markets, pledging to find a solution to the stranded fund, which is now close to $500 million. A Speaker of the House, Mr. Femi Majabiamila, also summoned the Ministry of Aviation and the Central Bank of Nigeria to another stakeholders meeting scheduled for today, as part of measures to release the trapped airlines funds in the country. Meeting with the Foreign Airlines, International Air Transport Association, Airline Operators of Nigeria and Travel Agencies on the Trapped Fund, Mr. Agbajabiamila notes that the inability of foreign airlines to repatriate funds has led to harsh consequences from the airlines. Though the CBN recently released $265 million out of the total of $464 million trapped, the foreign airlines still appear unimpressed by the gesture. The Federal Inland Revenue Service, FRS, says Nigerians should pay taxes as it when due as it gives them the right to demand accountability in the deployment of public resources. And Chairman of the FRS, Mr. Mohamed Mami, uh, made this known in the unveiling of the FRS service charter in Abuja, the nation's capital. Our correspondent, Lara Afolayo, tells us more. <laughs> The unveiling of the Federal Inland Revenue Service Service Charter is one of the events marking the Global Customer Service Week. The FIRS advises the public not to default in tax payment as it is critical to development. It also wants the people to trust the government and understand that tax payment is their statutory responsibility. To the FIRS chairman who described tax as a social contract says citizens also have the right to demand accountability from government on the use of tax income resources. FRM management has taken some strategic steps and actions to institutionalize effective and efficient service delivery to all our stakeholders. We will continue to drive that process and I encourage all staff to, pro to prioritize quality service delivery. The example of what obtains in developed clients is given here, where most infrastructure and privileges enjoyed by citizens are got from tax resources. Government at all levels are also advised to give the people value for remitted taxes. The importance of efficient service cannot be relegated in a service-oriented institution like FIRS as quality and service. Quality service to our taxpayers and customers in general lead to increase in tax compliance 
and revenue mobilization, which is integral to nation building. SEBICOM on its part commends the FIRS for being a foremost public institution committed to providing value to taxpayers. I'm appealing to government to let Nigerians have value for money. And this is a tool that will engage the government and the service takers. And so this is a very viable tool to engage us so that we can have value for money. In line with the focus of the Global Customer Service Week, the FIRS says it aligns with one of its four cardinal objectives of becoming a customer-centric institution. Against this backdrop, the FIRS is already working towards institutionalizing effective and efficient service delivery for all stakeholders, a move focused on promoting a better quality service delivery culture and teamwork among staff while rewarding them for their commitment to the mission and vision of the service. Lara Folayo, TVC News, Abuja. And global market gets our focus next as Asian shares fell today to their lowest since April 2020 as risk appetite among investors faded after inflation data across the globe reignited fears of aggressive interest rate hikes by the Federal Reserve. MSCI is the broadest index of Asia Pacific shares outside Japan fell as much as 1.8% before cutting some losses. And Euro stocks are 50 futures down at 0.43%, while German DAX futures is down at 0.45%. FTSA futures is down at 0.25%. Australia's index ADXJ was also down at 1.12% lower, while Japan's Nikkei slipped to 1% lower but spiked higher after being reported that China was considering cutting the duration of quarantine for inbound visitors. China's stock market also fell today while Hong Kong stocks hit levels last seen during the 2008-2009 global financial crisis in Asia. While the dollar has hit uh, the symbolic level of 150 yen today as the greenback was supported by Treasury yields trading at multi-year highs, keeping markets on high alert for any signs of an intervention from Japanese authorities. The moves, among other measures, were more muted with the euro at $0.99 and sterling at $1.12, both failing to regain ground so the dollar after tumbling the day before. The fragile yen briefly weakened past 150 per dollar in early European trading for the first time since August 1990. It was last trading flat, a little below that level. It has been on a losing streak for 11 straight sessions since yesterday's close. It has renewed 32-year lows for six sessions now. And leaders of the 27 European Union countries are meeting at the moment for the second time in the fourth night to try to bring down energy prices, though persistent divisions between them mean the bloc is unlikely to put a ceiling on what it pays for gas. The 27 are expected to back an alternative price benchmark for liquefied natural gas and joint gas buying after earlier agreeing to cut consumption and introduce levies on windfall profits in the energy industry. They are also discussing emergency spending to mitigate the effects acute energy crunch has on the economies and 450 million citizens. And while some countries have called for the bloc to issue new joint debts to finance that, more frugal members say hundreds of billions of euros on use from previous programs should be spent first. And finally, prices on the international markets gained around $1 today as investor sentiments rose on news that China is considering a cut in the duration of quarantine for inbound visitors. U.S. West Texas Intermediate Crude recorded an upsurge of 1.59%, selling at $89.91 per barrel. The Brent crude futures also experienced an upward price margin of 1.03%, selling for $93.36 per barrel. The body light sells for $91.00 per barrel, experiencing an uptick of 1.81%. And for the OPEC basket, crude oil dealers uh, the remaining in the red zone, selling for $90.82 per barrel, with a price decline of 1.45%.